Hello, I am here today in this video to talk to you about something called database as service. So I want to put it in the context of kind of web, web programming in general. And you know, this video is kind of sandwiched in the middle. It's, you know, you could just be here just to learn about databases and JavaScript and all that sort of stuff. But it's in the middle of this programming from A to Z playlist. And so I'm going to sort of set this topic in that context. So I've been using a variety of different tools and libraries and frameworks in making web applications around text in this video series. One is called uh, P5JS, which is a client-side library for JavaScript, and it has lots of nice things in it like drawing to the canvas and some DOM manipulation, and it lives on a client, like which I will draw as like a little laptop here, you know, and happens in the browser. Now, Another aspect that I have explored is something called uh, Node.js, also a framework for writing code in JavaScript for server-side programming. So, and the, the code that we've run runs on a server. Now, if you've watched some of my previous videos, you would have noticed that I'm running both the client and the server on one computer just to like mess around and try stuff and learn stuff and because I'm just, you know, Bah, 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 coding. Um, but if you were deploying, making a big thing and putting it out into the world, you would actually put it on some server somewhere, whether you have like an Amazon account or your own account or whatever. And then you might have lots and lots of clients all connecting to that server. Now, one of the things I explored is that on the server, you could store data. Uh, one of the examples I made just writes data to a, like a local text file, a JSON, a JavaScript object notation text file that sits here. So you can think of the simplest scenario here is like you made a game that people are playing in P5.js, and whenever they finish the game, it sends the score to the server. If it's a high score, it gets saved into the file. And then if somebody else comes to play later, they can request and see the current high scores, and their score can get saved into a file. So this is one something I've done, and I've demonstrated, and if you can go backwards in video time, you could see the pieces of this. You could get more sophisticated than just a local text file. You could actually have you know, a proper, so to speak, database. And you would need that if you have large amounts of data, or if uh, you needed you know, you know, encrypted passwords and all sorts of things and you want additional functionality, a database, and you can learn MongoDB or CouchDB and you can install that and get a node package and all that. What I'm here today in this video to show you the beginning steps of how to work with something called database as service. So what if there's something else existed? Oh, I, I, sh I made it a cloud. Nothing is a cloud. There is no cloud. There are clouds, it rains, but there's no, there's no clouds in the internet. So this other, let's, let me erase that. I don't know where my eraser went. Uh, whoop, here it is. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, there's another, what if there were another server somewhere? So this is a server that's, you know, you have some ownership or account over, this is your client. But what if there was a server that wasn't yours and that you could actually eliminate this and you could just say, hey, save this data for me could I get this data back? And you wouldn't have to write the server, the node program, set up the database. It would just exist, and it would have an API, an interface, for you to make calls to it. So this is what's known as database as service. Exclamation point. Database as service. So this is incredibly useful because you don't have to have, you don't have to like set up, configure. This is like easy, just like, you know, hey, can you say, you know, hey, database as service, could you save this for me? And I might ask you for it later. So now there are lots of examples of this. A particular product that I'm going to show you in this video and the next and the next one is something called Firebase, which is, uh, it wasn't originally uh, created by Google, but I believe Google, Google acquired it, so it's a, it's a Google service. Um, there is, um, there's something that I really like also called Sheet Sue. Uh, for um, turning a Google Sheet into an API that you can save data to and request data from. Um, I'm gonna, Sheets, for, uh, Sheet Sue doesn't have a lot of uh, great free options as far as I can tell. Maybe somebody can correct me in the comments and I'll come back and do a video about it. But as far as I can tell, you can only have one Google Sheet and 300 calls per month. So I'm gonna focus on Firebase, which is, uh, has quite a lot that you can do with it without a paid account. Um, you know, there's limits to that, of course. Um, and then there are probably other examples that you can add in the comments if there are things that you use that I should explore in a future video or that sort of thing. So this is, uh, oh, but I should mention, the last thing I want to mention here in this kind of introductory explanation is 
you also don't have to cut this out. So you could still have your node program, and your node program could also connect to the database as service. So there's, you know, it, it, it just sort of depends. If you only need client-side code and you just want to save some data, and you don't, you know, security isn't too much of an issue for you, um, this is going to be just fine. Uh, if you have some other server-side components, but you don't want to deal with setting up your own database, you could still use the database as service and the server and your client. Everything is possible. So um, this is my sort of introduction to why this matters. And in the next video, I'm going to just get started with a how to set up a Firebase account and how to send data to it from P5JS or any JavaScript program really and how to request data from any JavaScript program. And I'll see you in the next video if you're interested.